Joining us now is George Conway, attorney and contributing columnist to the Washington Post. George, good to see you. People across America were busy scanning you because I told them to scan the screen and then you came up <laughs> in the tease. So a lot of people got you on their phone now. Um, George, let's talk about this. Uh, one of the things that is interesting about the indictment of, of, of Donald Trump, the, the document is really interesting. You're a lawyer. Uh, you probably read it in great detail. But the response from Republicans has been really unified. There's this whole thing about the weaponization of the Department of Justice against Donald Trump, uh, broadly about Republicans and conservatives. I can't imagine it works. I was chatting with Simone about this, but it must because they're all doing it. It's mind boggling to me. I mean, it, it is another depth to which um, Republicans who defend Trump have sunk. I mean, it is just absolutely absurd that if, if any Democrat had done one-tenth of what Donald Trump is alleged to have done here, and I, I know they cite Hillary Clinton, but she did one fifty-thousandth of, not even, uh, not even that, of, of what happened here, uh, the, the Republicans would be screaming, screaming for a criminal prosecution, and they'd be right. So I, I just think that, you know, I mean, it's just clearly politically motivated and, and just shamelessly so. I mean, these people, a lot of them, uh, uh, Speaker McCarthy, I don't think he even waited to, to see and to read the indictment. I mean, if you open the indictment to almost any page, any paragraph, there's enough there for, for, a, for an Espionage Act charge or an obstruction charge uh, beyond any reasonable doubt. I mean, the evidence is actually just laid out in the indictment in a way that you don't often see. Hey, George, it's Jonathan Capehart. And so then, so what's it going to take? What do you think it's going to take to break that lockstep that Republicans have when it comes to Donald Trump defending him, saying, saying, yeah, 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 he says the sky is blue, the sky is red, and they lock march step, lockstep behind him and agree that the sky is red, even though they know it isn't? Oh, I, you know, I mean, I think it's going to take more of the kind of straightforwardness that we are now seeing from Chris Christie, although he has disappointed in the past, and from Asa Hutchinson and, and, and uh, Liz Cheney and those. But I, 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 I say there are just precious few people willing to do that. I mean, you think about it. I mean, Mike Pence, you know, he put out an ad the other day that was actually pretty good about the rule of law. And from time to time, you hear him say things mm -hmm. that are actually helpful, although, you know, he also often backtracks on them. And he is possibly he is also also partly responsible for what happened on January 6th because of his inaction before January 6th. Um, that said, I mean, I mean, a guy like him, if, if I were you know, a semi-shameless Republican candidate for president, I'd, I'd, I'd take the following view to try to persuade people to, um, to, to, to get off the Trump train. I'd say, you know, uh, and then, uh, are we, are we, um, is, is there a tape delay? Because I, I might puke if, if, <laughs> if I do say this. <laughs> but uh, I would say, I would say, I'd say, you know, I mean, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, and and I know Donald Trump is a good man to the depth of his soul, and he is a good Christian. But, you know, we are all sinners. We are all get carried away sometimes, and sometimes we do things that are wrong. And, 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 and here, you know, I mean, Donald Trump, they are out to get him. They have been mean to him. They have been terrible to him. Awful, absolutely awful, and I agree. I mean, he has been persecuted by the by the by by the left wing media and the and the woke mob. But he's making it easier for them. I mean, he just gets carried mm -hmm. away, and and we need to just basically get off that. I mean, uh, he's he did such a great job as president, but we it's just not going to happen again. So we need to move on. And, and I love Donald Trump. I know he's going to get mad at me for saying this. I love Donald Trump. I will love him to death no matter what he says about me. But, you know, in, in my Christian soul, I believe we just have to move on. That's, that's, that's the kind of thing. You, you could get, if you get some, maybe Mike Pence to do something like that, as, as sickening as it sounds, um, and, a couple, and a bunch of people to do that, maybe you move enough people um, but the problem is, you know, you've got like, you know, how many people do you have running in that primary? It's just not going to, you know, he, he's, they're, they're all splitting the anti-Trump vote. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know whether there are going to be enough voters who are going to coalesce behind a single candidate who is going to beat Trump. And 
the fact is, with the way the delegate system is set up, you, you don't need a majority of, of the primary voters to win. So yeah. um, I, I know Alicia has a, has a question, George. I just want to note, one, you have a future. Uh, anyone needs to call George Conway. I think he's available to play Mike Pence in debate <laughs> prep. And secondly, <laughs> I'm just going to clip that, that, that for my show now, at 4 p.m. tomorrow, so you'll see yourself. That was a little too southern accent. That was a little mm. too much southern accent for Indiana. I defer to my colleague, uh, Alicia <laughs> Menendez. Thank you for that. I, I think part of what is interesting Sorry, to I us... I think Sorry. part of what's interesting to us, George, is the fact that this was a party that used to pride yeah, itself it. on national security. This was a party that used to pride right. itself on the rule of law. David Jolly earlier t made the argument to me, this is a post-ideology party, right? There's no core ideology. If there is to be a Republican Party of the future, and the Republican leaders of this moment have looked the other way on national security, they have looked the other way on the rule of law, what then is left? for the party to build itself upon? Well, I mean, it's a problem. I mean, the, this, the Trumpism has metastasized. I mean, if it had been cut out earlier in 2017 or 2018, as I, you know, I always hoped that sooner or later people would say, basta, I mean, oh, come on, stop it. And, and that would be basically, you know, Trump's support would collapse like a, like a, a failing bridge. But that's never happened. I mean, we've been, you know, that was well, my hope for that was, you know, two impeachments, two indictments, uh, uh, an attempted coup and, um, you know, Clorox shots uh, ago, many Clorox <laughs> shots ago. And I, I just don't see it happening, even even with this indictment. I know other people are a little more hopeful. I know I know that Mike Murphy tweeted something the other day saying he thinks that, you know, when when people get to the voting booths, in New Hampshire and Iowa, they're going to say, oh, I, I can't deal with this anymore. And they're going to pull the lever for somebody else. But again, I mean, with with yeah. all of the candidates splitting the vote so many ways, I'm not sure who it is who's going to take the mantle away from Trump. And it's got to be somebody who's going to be willing to go after him, even in the even in the, the asinine way I, I just pretended to. George, thanks, as always. We uh, love hearing from you. We appreciate it. George Conway. Uh, we